next concept we want to cover in exponential functions in the exponent unit is geometric sequences, which if you think back earlier in the year, we did arithmetic sequences. So why am I waiting so long to do geometric sequences? Because arithmetic sequences were linear in nature, and geometric sequences are going to be exponential. So there's a lot of commonality between them, but there's a lot of um, differences between them. So a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers, a sequence of numbers in which the rate is constant. Okay. And so what is the common ratio? It is found by dividing each term by the previous term. Okay, so my rate here is, what is 250 divided by 50? It's 5. What is 50 divided by 10? It's 5. What is 10 divided by 2? It's 5. So my rate is 5. So that is a geometric sequence because that rate remains the same when using division. And you also can see that 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 5 is 5, and so on. If you look at number 3, 6 to 8 is 3, but 18 to 24, you're not multiplying by 3, and 24 times 3 is not 30, so this is not an arithmetic sequence. Notice here. Are you um, negative 10 divided by 20 is negative 1 half, negative 1 half, you're dividing by negative 1 half, and then negative 1 half. So yes, this is an arithmetic sequence, and the rate is negative 1 half. If we look over here, my rate to go from 5 to 15 is 1 third, 15 to 45 is 1 third, 45 to 135 is 1 third. And I'm dividing, so really, like, 5 divided by 15, reduce that fraction. That's how I'm getting that pretty quickly. Um, and I notice that it remains the same. So, yes, it is, an is it a geometric sequence, and the rate is 1 third. If I look here, I can see this pattern that I'm multiplying by negative 2, by negative 2, by negative 2. So it's the same. It's dividing by a negative 2. So, yes, this is a geometric sequence, and my rate is negative 2. If I look at number 6, if I multiply by 4, I multiply by 4, I multiply by 4, so my rate is going to be positive 4, and yes, it's consistent the whole way, so my rate is 4. So that's how we find the um, common ratio. It's um, dividing, or you can see I multiplied in some instances as it was easier. So that's how I'm finding that common ratio, okay? Now that I have that, so now we just think, okay, seven times, these are geometric sequences, so what's the next in the pattern? We have to identify the rate is negative three, so I'm multiplying 63 times negative three is negative 189, times negative three is 567, times negative three is negative 1701. So you guys can figure um, this part out on your own. Um, you're just finding that sequence. Um, so now let's look at the formula. So the formula that you're going to use, and again, this is on your SAT and PSATs, and so when you take that standardized test, this is one of the things they test for is geometric sequences. So my formula looks like this, and remember what N stands for. It stands for that first, um, what you're looking for. And so I had A1, 1 means the first term, times R time to N to the minus 1 power. So that's why this is exponential growth, because it's raised to an exponent. So what do these values stand for? Well, A1 is your first term in the sequence. Your R is the common ratio, common ratio. And N is the, um, well, that's the term that you're looking for. So N is the term that you're looking for. So it's saying write the rule for the nth term. That's my rule. That's going to be my formula. But I want to find the A to the seventh. So the first thing I'm going to do is, here's my formula. I want to find, so my first term is 3 times, i got to identify my rate, and my rate is 3, so I get 3 
to the n minus 1. That's what my formula looks like here. So now I'm going to plug in some information because I'm asked to find the seventh term. So I get 3 times 3 to the 7 minus 1 is 6 power. Here we have to remember our rules for um, order of operations. Lots of times students want to multiply 3 times 3 and get 9. You can't do that. You have to do exponents first. So it's 3 to the 6th power. And when I do 3 to the 6th power, remember that carrot top, and then I'm going to multiply it by 3, and I get that the 7th term is 2,187. So if you remember back to when we did arithmetic sequences, I'm looking for two things. This is my formula. You must find the formula. And then after you plug it in looking for the seventh term, then you find your answer. So formula and answer. Let's look at this one here, number 13. So I'm going to write my formula over here. So it's um, A1 times rate N minus 1. That's the formula I'm going to be using. And so I'm going to identify my A1 is 400. My rate is 2, 1 half. My rate is 1 half. And so to find my formula, a n equals 400 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. That's the formula I'm looking for. Now I'm, gonna I'm just going to use my calculator, and it's looking for the seventh term still. That doesn't change. So I get 400 times 1 half to the sixth power. And when I do that, I'm going to type in 1 half to the 6th power first. So I'm going to open parentheses, 1 divided by 2, close parentheses, use that caret top to plug in 6, press enter, and then multiply by 400. So I have to do this operation first, then multiply by 400, and I get my answer is going to be the 7th term is going to be 6.25. That's the seventh term in that sequence, okay? Um, let's look at number 15. So my formula, again, stays the same. A n equals A 1 times R to the n minus 1 power. So my A 1 value is negative 1. Um, my rate is going to be negative 16 divided by negative 4, so it's a positive 4. So my formula is a n equals negative 1 times 4 to the n minus 1. That's the formula that I'm looking for. Now I'm looking for the seventh term in the sequence. So the seventh term would be negative 1 times 4 to the 6th power. So it's 7 minus 1. That's how I'm getting 6. So 4 to the 6th power is the first thing I'm going to do. So 4 carat top 6 times negative 1, which you know is just negative 4,096. So, seventh term in the sequence, look at that, how much it decreases, um, negative 4,096. Um, so that is geometric sequences. If you have any questions, let me know. Remember, the key point here is you're looking for two things, formula and then the answer. Good luck.